r slash ask reddit reddit what's the most ultimate petty revenge you've seen or been a part of you youngins here might not believe it but back in the early 90s supermarket cashiers had to type every price in by hand i was at avon's in san diego walking toward the only open check stand with a single bottle of soda in my hand Suddenly this hotty totty lady with a cart stacked to the top flew out of one of the aisles like a freight train and cut me off. I'm in a hurry, she said, then looked away like she was annoyed that I'd been born. I looked at the cashier. He rolled his eyes and got to work. Five minutes later she's walking out the door and it's my turn. You're good, says the cashier. I put your soda on her tag. Damn. That felt good. Personally, one of the most satisfying here. As a cashier this warms my heart. Edit. Former cashier. I used to deliver pizza for Domino's. It was my last shift and there was this house that was always rude. I called to ask what the house looked like and they said I gave you the address and hung up. Never tipped. Etc. I got to their house and they gave me a check for 1 cent less at what the total was. I said I am going to need the extra penny. They grumbled off and took their time hoping I would give up but I just sat there holding the pizza. They finally came back all pissed off and gave me the penny. Note that they had no intention of tipping. They gave me the penny and I chucked it out into the street and left. They saw me do it. It was satisfying. Holy shit. Imagine their faces. Yeah they probably went to get it back. I occasionally deliver pizza as a part time job. There is a customer that tends to pay with a big bag of change. I don't mean a bag full of quarters. I mean a bag full of dimes, nickels, and pennies. Since his meal typically costs about $20, the bag usually weighs several pounds. It is a total pain to count out all of the change. So typically drivers will just assume that he has the correct amount and leave. Usually, he has just enough or maybe a few cents over. I don't think it is an innocent thing either, as he usually gives a bag of change with a shit-eating grin. It is such a pain that most of the drivers know his address by heart and avoid going to his house if at all possible. I was having a bad night, and by the luck of the draw got this dude's house. I remembered reading a post on r slash pity revenge involving someone paying in a checkout line with a bag of change, and I knew I could use a similar method to take my frustration out on this guy in the pettiest way possible. I pulled up to his house, and left the pizza in the car, I rang the doorbell, and when he answered I saw the large bag of change in his hand that I knew would be there. He asked where his pizza was, and I said new policy, sir. Go to count it out before we can give out the pizza. So I sat down on his doorstep and started to count out all of the change. At one point, I even asked if he could turn on his pork light. Because I was having a hard time seeing. He did end up sitting there while I counted out the entire bag of change. Even though it took about 10 minutes, he ended up being about a dollar over. So I started picking up pennies to give him his change back. When he said that I could keep the rest as a tip. When I gave him his pizza, he sheepishly told me sorry and then shut the door. The whole situation was incredibly awkward. And to my knowledge he hasn't ordered pizza from us in a while. Oh well. I thought you'd break the pizza into itty bitty pieces. Put them in a bag and give it to him. But it looks like you're a better person than I am. I thought he'd grab the bag of coins and beat the man with it. But it looks like you're a better person than I am. There was this kid. About 15 who cut in line in front of me at the supermarket. When he wasn't watching I broke his chocolate bar while still inside the wrapper. Later I saw him cycling by, opening his bar, and half of it fell out. He got pissy and I chuckled. Now this is petty. Much better than the guy shoving his dad's toothbrush's ass. Love it. Wait what? Knew a crazy kid in elementary. Kid jumped across the table and tried to choke me out. I got suspended BC I instigated it by saying he was cuckoo for Coco Puffs when that the only thing that kid ever talked about and was wearing a Coco Puffs shirt that day. Senior year of high school kid was in my design class. Needed to get a C or better on the final. Over the year I found out the kid was taking my work off my shared drive. High school IT was dumb and each kid's folder was public. And copying it. For the final I purposely ducked up the drawing in my folder. But the kid didn't double check it. He turned it in and failed and had to go back and be a super senior. TLDR. Kid choked me. 
Waited 10 years made them fail high school. Edit. I turned in an A plus DWG. Left a shit DWG in its place. Kid jumped across the table and tried to choke me out. I got suspended I'm sorry. What? Who made that rule? Zero tolerance policy. Happened in my high school as well. One guy sucker punched another guy and they both got suspended. When me and my ex fiance were having a bunch of arguments after we broke up. I got tired of her constantly texting me about nonsense so I called insert phone carrier to have them cut off service to her phone that I paid for in the middle of an argument. Brilliant. You never reinstated is right? No. Told her to get her other man to pay for it if she wanted it back. Depending on the router, you can throttle bandwidth. You should have limited him to just unplayable speeds. But he could still connect to everything. I'd rather have no internet than slow internet. It was one of those blue and black Linksys routers that everyone had back in the day. I wasn't as tech savvy then or else I would have tried something like that. Watching him get lag killed over and over until he rage quit would have been ducking poetic justice. My roommate and her soul loved doing elaborate jigsaw puzzles. After I found out she cancelled our lease, leaving me one week to find a new place to live, I threw away one piece of two different puzzles they were working on, before you ask. She was able to do this because I was 17. And not able to legally sign a lease. Edit. I'm a she. Dad was on a boat. Mom was. Hum. IDK where that crazy girl was at. Everything turned out cool. I'm married and I'm a mom to an awesome little girl. I don't know why the adults in my life let things go down like that. Maybe cause we live in a certain southern state that rhymes with Malabama. Edit. Stupid phone. That was a beach move on her part. I would have thrown out a few pieces, jumbled the rest together and maybe even buy a new puzzle just to add some spice to the mix. Let them figure out what pieces go to which puzzles and then be bewildered where those other random pieces go. A girl on my softball team bullied me and spread rumors about me to the team and coaches. We were competing for the same position. She was in my geometry class and tried to buddy up to me because I was good at geometry, and she wasn't. So for a while I let her copy my homework. Then one day I gave her all the wrong answers and turned in the right answers for myself. I thought you were going to say you broke her arms. So in this case would her dad have helped her? My neighbor's dog shits in our yard all of the time. It wouldn't be a big deal. Except he never cleans up after her. I finally had enough. So I decided to go with a classic. I put a flaming bag of his dog's shit on his porch, rang the bell, and hid in the bushes. When he answered the door, I finally got my revenge by having an affair with his wife for the last three and a half years. Well, that was unexpected. A surprise to be sure. My sister said some pretty mean things to me in front of my friends when I was younger. So I put a slice of bologna in her Walkman CD player. I got the idea from Cory in the show That's So Raven. Cory in the house. Early in a game of Civ V, Alexander stole Petra from me at the last second. So I built a special city in the frozen wastes. Blocked it in with my own cities. Gifted it to him. Then burned the rest of his empire to the ground. It took about 5 hours. I like to think he learned his lesson. But that forward settling duck still looks as smug as ever. I once had a thousand year war with France due to them settling on a road between two of my cities. The road was right up against some mountains and had water on the other sides but that duck settled there anyway. He refused any offer I made for the city and once the war started, every peace treaty involved him taking one of my cities and all my resources, nuking him twice changed his mind in the end. I sure do love the duck you. I got mine. Give me your shit 2 diplomacy of Civ 5 army. Absolutely zero ability to just trade and be a normal non-warring non-a-hole Civ. Boss paged me on my wedding night. Yeah, bad on me for leaving the pager on but in my defense it automatically turned on after charging and I wanted to have a full battery before setting off on my honeymoon trip. He did it as a joke, but it came at an inappropriate moment. We had a page only if something's on fire policy, so I had to call in even though I had just gotten married and was about to go on two weeks vacation. When he answered, he laughed so hard I just had to do something about it. So when I got back I programmed the mail servers to call out on their phone lines and hit his pager with dial back numbers for phone sex services. At 4am, every day, 
His wife got this pager before he did one time and saw a text message something like I loved how you described how you would fk me. Jerry, call back when your wife's gone for the day. Wife was not amused. He thought he'd been calling phone sex operators and tore him a new one. He knew it was me, but he was too stubborn to ask me to call it off, so it kept up for weeks until he finally figured out where the script was running from and used it to page me instead. We had a back and forth pager war for a while, but then it all ducked up when an actual data center emergency happened and one of us ignored the page thinking it was the other pranking him. That ended the fun. This is the perfect mix between petty revenge and oddly wholesome friendship. In other words, typical system administrator behavior. My little brother and his girlfriend came to stay at my house for the weekend, and the girlfriend was super self-centered and obnoxious. When they left, she forgot her clothes and toiletries because she left them sprawled all over my bathroom. About a week later, she and my brother moved into an apartment together, after he paid for the moving truck, deposit and utilities. She cheated on him with her ex and kicked him out of the apartment. This left him broke, homeless, and heartbroken. In the days after the breakup, she kept calling and emailing him several times per day, demanding that he ask me to ship her clothes and toiletries back to her. I mean, it's really important. It's my north face. Close bracket. My brother called and pleaded with me to ship them to her so she would stop having a reason to contact him. Being the loving sister that I am. I gathered up the really important North Face sweatshirt, shorts, underwear, shampoo, conditioner, soap and razor. I folded everything nicely. I then wrote a nice note apologizing for taking so long to mail them to her and let her know that I hope all is well. The note was written in permanent marker and the paper happened to be resting on the really important North Face when I wrote it. Unfortunately, the ink bled straight through the paper and onto the shirt. Also unfortunately, the shampoo, soap and conditioner caps were not tightly secured on their bottles, and the contents leaked out all over the clothes, further spreading the ink. The most unfortunate result, though, was that her razor didn't have any sort of protective cap or container and left little slashes all over the front of the really important north face. She received the package, and my brother never heard from her again. My wife used to keep these little Godiva chocolates that she likes in her desk at work, but started noticing some of them missing and figured it must be someone from the overnight cleaning staff taking them. Fed up with losing her not inexpensive treats, she decided to get revenge on the choco thief in question by replacing the good chocolate with little squares of chocolate laxatives that look just like real candies. The next morning she saw several of the laxatives gone, and then from that day forward, she was never missing another one of her good chocolates ever again. Sounds a lot like the story I heard from a similar thread last week. Guy was tired of his roommate drinking his milk, so he put laxatives in the milk and the roommate had to go to the hospital because he was dehydrated. He just told the guy he must be allergic to milk. Hey I saw that. I'm used to work shifts many years ago, including regular night shifts. My boss was an unpleasant person to say the least. He would leave his keys on top of his locker. One night I took a small file to work and filed down one or two teeth of his front door key. The next day he was telling everyone of how he got home and his door lock was broken and he had to get a locksmith out which cost a fortune and he didn't get much sleep. Happened again a couple of months later. Then his car key got some treatment. I stopped after that as I heard him mention it was getting suspicious that all these locks stopped working. But, unknown to me, other colleagues also disliked him. One night his locker disappeared entirely. Rumor has it that it's part of the foundations of an office block in London now. One night his locker disappeared entirely. Brilliant. That is dedication. To steal a locker and I assume its contents. In 400 years it will be uncovered and be in all the papers. Late and not as sophisticated as most, but I started in a new job two years ago and hated a guy that kept joking about me. So I got his phone number and announced his PS4 for sale for like $50. Same day during lunch he was already nuts because of the calls. OFC he found a way to remove it, but it was nice to watch. I liked the guy who put flyers out announcing a Chewbacca sound alike contest. People were supposed to call, not say anything and go into their best Chewbacca roar. Edit. Holy crap you guys liked this. Here's a link of a sample flyer https colon slash slash pbs 
Wimg, Com Media BLCR9 Jicoxism. JPG. That's the most brilliant prank ever. Harmless but completely WTF just happened. When I was in 7th grade, the startup my dad was a part of was failing miserably in no small part due to a crazy CEO. While at his house, my dad observed the CEO's toddler daughter picking up a piece of dog shit and licking it. He picked her up and told her to give her dad a kiss. Ah yes the old reddit switcher poo editor -oo. Sorry guys I forgot to edit the link in. A horrible former co-worker always claimed she worked way more hours than she actually did, and when she was at work she just browsed Facebook all day. The doctor slash owner was very hands off and just let her do whatever she wanted, despite me going to him with proof. So I decided to take revenge. She was not computer savvy at all, so I removed Internet Explorer from her desktop and installed an identical icon that, when clicked, would instantly restart the computer. It was so satisfying when she would forget and click it, losing anything that she was working on. She would always grumble and complain about the virus on her computer. I started a new job about 3 weeks later, and when I left it was still giving her problems. I set a 10 minute song as the closing sound of a friend's computer, so it wouldn't shut down until the song finished. Windows is shutting down, right after, in its entirety, Moby Dong. My mom and dad. This happened when I was in my late 20s. My mom and I were in the car. My dad called and they started bickering with each other. My mom got irritated and hung up on him. He called her right back and when she answered he hung up on her. Didn't even say a word just waited for her to pick and and hung up. It was so petty and hilarious to see my parents acting like children. I couldn't stop laughing. They've been married over 35 years. I still get tickled when I think about that. I lived in a cheap crappy apartment with roommates and we all worked in fast food. Money was tight. One roommate ended up unemployed for a few weeks and then got a job as a bank teller, making much better money. However while unemployed she had missed her rent payment, which we had scraped together to cover for her. Two weeks into the new job she gets her first paycheck. Obviously we are expecting immediate payback. Day 1 she says something along the lines of she couldn't do personal business, cash her check, during work so she could pay us in a couple of days. The Friday she was supposed to pay us she comes home with a big shopping bag and casually mentions she can't pay back rent yet because she had to buy new work clothes. When roommates and I got upset she went total beach on us that we didn't understand how to work a professional job because we were only food service and basically told us we would get our money when she felt like it. That weekend she misplaced her name tag required at work. She spent hours searching for it. At some point, I came across the name tag in a random spot and said nothing. She kept searching for it all weekend and was panicked that she would look bad to her boss, etc. I never moved or took the name tag but the whole time I knew where it was. She never found it and had to get a new one. She also never paid the back rent and we kicked her out a few weeks later. So where was her name tag? The suspense is killing me. During my freshman year of high school I was in a biology class that was made up of mainly juniors. This one guy, who sat next to me, would always be a jerk to me during class. I always did well on the tests so he would always look over and copy the answers from my scantron. I'm pretty sure he didn't realize that I knew he was cheating off of me. Well one day I got fed up with this guy messing with me and cheating off of me. So the next test comes around and sure enough he starts copying my answers. I finish the test and so does he. He gets up and turns his test in and comes back to his seat. I looked him in the eyes and proceeded to erase my entire scantron. I then retook the test, this time marking the correct answers. The look of panic in his eyes was so satisfying. He ended up making a 2% on that test and never cheated off me again. I was going to say how is it possible to guess on a scantron and get only 2% but then realize you purposefully chose the wrong answers at a 98% accuracy. Damn that's brutal. I had a professor once who claimed he would give an A in the class to anyone who could get to get every answer wrong on the final. A 100 question scantron test. I'm not sure if anyone attempted it, but it always seemed to me that it was probably more difficult than getting a near perfect score. In grade school, I kept a bag of chips in the same pocket every day of my backpack. This kid I knew would punch that pocket any chance he could for 5 days in a row. One day I replaced the chips with a bag of sewing pins. 
He never did it again. Sweet sweet justice. Jesus. Umfeo. I had a friend who poked a thumbtack outward through his pocket and went around telling people to feel this weird bruise on his leg. When he got to one guy in particular, Pranky immediately punched the area upon hearing it was a bruise. Got a pin in his knuckle instead. I worked at a 50k plus tech company. I worked with a PM, Maggie, who misread my email and got her dates messed up. She scheduled a meeting for Thursday instead of Friday. When I told her she scheduled on the wrong day, she got mad at me and emailed all my managers up to my vice president, four levels of management, to say how much of a troublemaker I was. It was her own fault for not being able to read. Two years later, I have to work with her again and I pretend like I'm all happy and friends with her. Two years after that, I quit and move on to a better company. I get an email saying that Maggie is applying to my new company and said I could provide a positive reference for her. I email the recruiter and blast all my six years of shit on her and block her from getting hired. Take that Maggie, you ducker. I never forget. I saw an ad for a work from home type job. It didn't sound scammy and sounded sort of legit. So I asked for more info from the website. Enter your email thing. It was crap. And was sending me spam several times a day. For whatever reason blocking it didn't work. I got annoyed one day and answered back. Stop spamming me. The guy actually answered. He actually monitors that address. He told me to unsubscribe. Which did nothing. After about another week of it. I came up with an idea. I took his email address he answered from and added it to his own list. Then signed it up for any other spam I could find. A few days later it stopped spamming me. Probably too late. But actually marking emails as spam actually works as well. If enough people do it it starts lowering their rating from your email provider and more and more of their emails start ending up in users spam folder rather than directly in their main box. I used to handle my company's email. Obviously non-spam. And it would infuriate me to no end that some of our metrics go down when someone marked our reset password email as spam. You wanted to reset your email why did you mark it as spam? When I was a kid, I attempted to call my aunt. For whatever reason I accidentally dialed a 6 instead of a 3 and this man cursed me out for being a telemarketer. I was so stunned I didn't even hang up initially. My petty revenge was giving the number to all my friends and for about 2 weeks we called him every day at all hours. This was my best revenge. I went through an awful divorce. My ex-wife cheated on me, told lies about me and all throughout the divorce I took the high road and was there for my kids while she disappeared off the face of the earth. Her birthday was only a couple of weeks after the divorce was final. As the kids were young I was a good guy and purchased several presents from the kids to her. Among the gifts I bought a necklace with a big red A at the end. Her first name is Anne. I had the kids give that to her and she wore her scarlet letter all around town. Most people in our town knew what she had done and some even were aware of the necklace. Yup, I made my adulterous ex-wife wear the scarlet letter. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.